Next up we have each of those pictures from those previous slides from the compare and contrast part. Each of those pictures up here. You need to copy it. This one goes by 20s and 2s. And that picture is going to match one of these examples. It doesn't match that one because that one says 15 for every $1.50. Let's see if anything else uses the same numbers. This one says the trail is 20. $20 starting fee, so that's going to be the y-intercept, and then $15 every two months. For this graph that I've highlighted, it started at 20, so it's not the one about downloading songs, it's not the one about driving, it's not about the bike ride. This picture needs to go here. So let me paste it. In case you don't know how to copy it, you push Control on your keyboard and C to paste it, Control and V. The other option is if you right click it, then you can copy and paste the pictures. This graph goes with number four. Was this graph discrete? or continuous. If you've made it to this point, then that means you already did the compare and contrast. You already saw that some of these graphs had dots and some of them were continuous lines. If it was only a dotted graph, then we call that a discrete graph. If it was a continuous line, then that's a continuous graph. The difference is this one only has specific answers, while this one can have an infinite number of decimal answers. In between, this one has lots of little tiny connections. You can go anywhere in between this line. Any decimal on that line is good to go. That's an answer. But on this dotted one, only the dots are our good answers. So on this dotted graph, we have one answer for x, for the x's. One answer was at 0. Another dot had the x of 2, then 4, then 6. Then this dot has an x of 8, 10, 12, and 14 has no answer. So this graph, if you click here, you can do a scribble. And we're going to circle, come on scribble, we're going to circle discrete because this one had dots for the graph. And then in the text box, we're going to write all possible x values. All possible x's is the domain. So the domain was equal to, and I'm going to use a curly brace, we could be zero. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 was the last one, comma 12. Close it. Now we're going to write all of the y values. If we look at the dots, the first dot has a y of 20. Then that one, I don't know. But then this one over here is follow it over. This is counting by tens. Halfway between 40 and 60 is 50. So I have 20, and then I have 50, and then this one's in the middle, and then this one's at 80. So every second dot from here to here went up by 30. From that first dot to the third dot, it went up by 30 for y, which means that this other one this point in the middle is going to be halfway between 20 and 50. All right, so we had this number 20. And then up here we had 50. We need to find out halfway between 20 and 50. So how you do that is you do the average between those. 50 plus 20 divided by 2 
will give us the middle. This would be the midpoint. To find the midpoint, you add two numbers together and then divide by two. The top makes 70. We're dividing by two. Half of 70 is going to be 35. So then our first y for the range, our first y is going to be 20. Then we have 35. And that change between those, now that we know what that middle number is, now we can see what the change is. From each y, the change was $15. So we're going to go up by 15 each time to get 50, 65, 80, 95, and then the last one we have is 110. You would type these ones in with your text box. Starting from 20, you're going to count by 15s for your Y's until you get to 110. I need you to do number 1, 2, and 3 on your own. This next part of the lesson wants you to draw lines. It's also going to ask you to highlight different sides of this shape. So change the color to match. And here's what that finally means. It says, use horizontal and vertical lines to draw a box around the graph. Not everything, but we want to make sure that no part of this graph, of this curve, is outside of our box. So we're going to draw a box directly around this curve. We want our box to touch the edges but it still has to be a perfect box. So let's show what that would look like. Starting from here, go up to the top. Then, going from here, connect until we are at the rightmost spot. Then from that corner, we're going to trace it back down until we're even with that other bottom one. From here, drag this other dot straight down to here, and then we're going to connect the bottom to finish that box. Now we have our box, but these lines are very skinny, so let's make them a little thicker. Let's make them three thickness. Highlight the left and right side. So let's change those, the left side and the right side, to be a different color other than black. We can make these blue. Record the smallest number and the largest number from left to right. So from left to right, that is the x-axis. The smallest number on the x-axis was, this line goes through, negative 3. The smallest number was negative 3. The largest number, the largest number going from left to right, this other rightmost blue line goes through 5. So we're going to put a text box for the largest number being 5. Then we're going to write all of the x values. Well, the smallest was negative 3 on the left. And then, look at this graph. This graph has a continuous line from left to right. Because it's continuous, and because this dot is a 
full circle dot. It's not an open circle, it's a full circle. We're gonna put less than equal to, these are x's, and we are less than or equal to five. The boundaries for the x's were from negative three, any number in between, including the decimals, up until five. X needs to be in between those two. This is called the domain. Now let's change the top and the bottom part of this box. The top part, let's make it green. The bottom will also make it green. Record the smallest number from bottom to top. The smallest number down here, even though I kind of missed it, let's move it so that it touches. The smallest number is in between negative 60 and negative 80. Halfway in between 60 and 80 is 70, so the smallest number is negative 70. The largest number, that's up here for y. In between 140 and 160 is 150. Then we're going to take these two numbers, the smallest y and the greatest y, and we're going to put them as an inequality. The smallest y was negative 70, and every other y, every other y was greater than that, but there were no y's that were bigger than 150. All of the y's need to be bigger than negative 70, but less than 150, or equal to. The set of all of the y's on the graph is called the range. Range. We're almost done. This next slide is the main idea for today's lesson. All we did was we identified the different types of graphs. You had discrete and continuous. Discrete and continuous. And we labeled the domains and the ranges of each of these graphs, each type. So I need you to fill this in on your own, in your notebook, using your own ideas based off of the today's lesson. Turn it into me, and then I'll make any corrections that need to be made. I'll tell you about those. If you can't see down here the scale, then you need to mess with the zoom. And the zoom is kind of annoying. So you need to zoom out. If you have a touch screen, then you can zoom back in. And now you can see the bottom numbers there.